Hello and how are you? My name is Winnie Barawa and welcome to our session on cardinal and constitutional symptoms of pulmonary conditions. I understand you may be wondering what are those, but if you're new here, this is a channel that we call Medic Academy that focuses on lectures, lessons, and sessions pertaining to healthcare. So if this is your area of interest, welcome very much. Subscribe and remember to comment. So stay with me as we learn more about pulmonary conditions and their, system, their symptoms. Let's introduce what those big words meant up there. The constitutional and the cardinal symptoms. So let's start first with the cardinal symptoms. Cardinal symptoms, it means uh, symptoms that are related to the chest and thorax, or rather it means symptoms that are directly reflecting the chest or the thoracic region. For example, coughing. Coughing or when someone coughs, the first thing you will think about are either the lungs or organs around the, the thorax or the respiratory system. However, there are signs and symptoms that a patient can display that may not be directly relating to the respiratory system, but they are actually displaying a condition that is pulmonary related. So these symptoms, we call them the constitutional symptoms. So we say these are symptoms relating us to the chest and the thorax, but they are not part of the chest. Symptoms that are related to the chest or the thorax or a pulmonary system, but are not part of the chest. For example, we can have joint pains. And with joint pains, the joint pains are many in our body. We have the knee joints, the elbow joints, the ankle joints, all these are joints. And there are some conditions when a patient develops, they can display all these signs and symptoms. However, they are not directly relating to the chest. I mean, happening on the chest, but they could be res uh, responding to a respiratory condition. So I hope here we've said clarification on how these two symptoms are. Cardinal symptoms, we can just say they are directly happening within our respiratory system. Constitutional symptoms, on the other hand, we can say there are symptoms that are happening in other parts of the body, but they are related to the chest or they are related to the respiratory conditions. And this is the main purpose of this class. We are going to explore all these symptoms one by one, but I want to start with the cardinal symptoms or other people in other books, you know, refer to them as breathlessness, shortness of breath, difficulty in breathing, all these are allowed uh, names that you can use in the in the place of dyspnea. And with dyspnea, we are told it can easily be displayed with conditions such as asthma, COPD, what you call the uh, congestive or I mean obst uh, the the con chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Sorry, it can also be in the interstitial lung diseases, myocardial dysfunction, obesity, and also anemia. So characteristically, we are told to look at dyspnea in different arenas. You can look at dyspnea based on the speed of onset. So if it is sudden, if it is gradual, if it is intermittent, all this speed of, uh, of set or onset will display different conditions. Then the duration of the dyspnea, then we have timing. When does it happen? If it's happened early morning, it refers to different conditions. If it is referring to paroxysmal nocturnal that is happening at night, it also displays different cases of illnesses. And then we have the state of position, like when does our patient experience this particular dyspnea? So we have dyspnea that happens when our patient is in superimposition. And this dyspnea, the experience, we call it the orthopnea. So topnia is dyspnea that comes up when a patient is in a supine position. And then we have plat uh, platypnea. This is now 
a state whereby the patient is developing uh, dyspnea when they're in the upright position. And interestingly, the platypnea is cleared when the patient goes back to supine position. Interesting, right? And then the other part you can look at dyspnea is in terms of severity. How severe is the state? And you can use that to describe the condition. So the cardinal symptom that mostly we look at in respiratory system condition is the dyspnea. That is number one. Number two is chest pain. And of course, pain, pain, pain is something no one can ignore. And what happens with pain when we have it in our chest area? So we're being told that with pain, our patient ends up being unable to breathe properly or they're not able to expand their cavities adequately to take in oxygen or to inspire and expire. And for this purpose, it can lead to complications or status such as hypoventilation. The patient can develop atelectasis, a state where we say the alveoli can collapse. And you can also have a state of retention or retained secretions because it is through our breathing that we are able to consolidate and, you know, pull out all the secretions from our systems and cough them out. But where there is pain in our chest, we end up unable to breathe adequately or to cough adequately for us to allow proper air entry or air exit. And for that, then there's the complications of hypoventilations, atelectasis, and the retentions of the secretions. So now pain can be in many forms. It can be acute, chronic, pleuritic, localized, all this can come about or can be described on the pain. So starting with the localized pain, here we are looking at pain that is constant and does not spread to other areas. So we are being told localized pain on the chest refers to rib fractures or rather it will be guiding us of state of rib fractures or traumas. It could also be indicating to us status of pleural infections like MPMAs. It could also be a sign of malignancy. And it could also be a sign of systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE. So the pain on the chest, it's happening directly on the chest. But like we are saying, it can be acute, chronic, pleuritic, or localized. And localized here, we are saying it's a constant pain that is indicative of conditions such as rib fractures, pleural infections like MPMAs malignancies, or even erythematosus. But what of the pleuritic chest pain? So with pleuritic chest pains, this is pain that mostly is increased or is um, perpetrated by status of either breathing in or out or movement or change of position and so on. So with the pleuritic chest pain, it's indicative of conditions such as pulmonary embolism or infarction. It also indicates pulmonary pleurisism or pneumothorax. So pain brings out many um, or indicates many conditions, but you need to understand the nature. If it is acute, chronic, pleuritic or localized, then you can use that state to get an accurate description of the illness that you could be handling for your patient. The other cardinal sign is cough. And cough in physiology, we treat it as a reflex, a reflection or uh, a reflex to different um, stimulants. It could be well, coughing due to allergic reaction. Some people cough due to congestion in a particular area or they're congested in a given place. So with cough, we need to understand it based on the nature or characteristics such as productive or non-productive. Productive cough means cough that comes out with sputum. So people, other, other books or other medics can describe it as wet cough. Sorry, wet, uh, wet cough, yes, or cough that comes with, uh, with sputum. Non productive on the other side does not accompany any uh, any secretions or it's not accompanied by any sputum. So we call it also dry cough. But we cough, you can also describe it with duration if it is acute, subacute, or chronic cough. So with acute cough, this is cough that has been in existence for less than three weeks. 
with cough that has been existing for more than three weeks but less than eight weeks then we call it subacute and then we have the state of chronic cough which is cough that has been existing for more than eight weeks so if we have existence of cough in all these states this can also be guiding of the different conditions that can be present in our patient and the other part is sputum production sputum can also be sometimes referred as expectorant or export expotrations discharges or flames so all these are names that can be used to refer to it but our respiratory system produces sputum in cases where there is presence of inflammatory process or in the presence of allergic reactions so in an inflammatory process mostly caused by infections or infection uh, uh, causes it can stimulate an inflammatory process and lead to production of sputum in the presence of allergic uh, components we can also have presence of an inflammatory reaction that later on leads to production of the discharge but now what characteristics can we use to understand the sputum production as a symptom so number one, we are told we need to look at sputum in different ways based on the nature, like viscosity. Is it purulent? Is it blood stained? Is it false smelling? Is it watery, copious, and so on? Sometimes we also need to look at sputum based on the colors. So let's start one by one. We are being told that the cough I mean, uh, with sputum most of also follows with cough. But sputum looking at the purulent characteristic, which says it means this presence of degenerate white blood cells in the secretions that indicates presence of inflammation or allergies. And that with purulent, then this could be indicating inflammation or allergic reactions. For example, in the presence of asthmatic reactions or pneumonia. So you'll get purulent sputum. While in states of blood stained sputum, it could also be indicating of trauma or also tumors that are present in our airways or our respiratory organs. If you also look at the sputum that is being produced, if it is false smelling sputum, then that could indicate on us the presence of a lung abscess. Other types of sputum are the copious clear sputum. So in some state of lung carcinomas, you can also get clear sputum. So all these are possible types of sputum or characteristics that we can find, but you need to know that each type has a different indicator when it comes to the disease it's representing. And to close up, we have hemoptasis. And with hemoptasis, we are looking at a state of coughing up of blood, and with the coughing up of blood, most of the time, with the coughing of blood, it comes with indication of different illnesses. For instance, there's pneumonia, TB, bronchitis, or it could be non-malignant, indicating illnesses like pulmonary edema. But in minority of these cases, it indicates malignancy or tumors or cancer, if you refer it that way. That if you see blood in the cough or you see blood in the sputum, then you can think of infections that can produce such. And these infections could be pneumonia, TB, or bronchiectasis. But also it could be indicative of conditions such as pulmonary edema. However, a minority of like 10 to 20 percent is caused by malignancy state. And here we are referring to cases of tumors, cancers, and such. And here we come to the constitutional symptoms. And with constitutional symptoms, we introduced it and said, these are symptoms that refers to conditions that are happening in our respiratory systems, but the symptoms are happening in other parts of the body. So let's highlight these symptoms. We will not do one, all of them one by one because most of them are self-explanatory. So let's start off. We have fever. And fever is a state of high temperatures in our bodies. Most of the time we like to refer state of like 37.9 or 38 degrees Celsius and so on. We also have sweats or sweating. And sweats 
um also is known as dysphoria you know where we have either night sweats morning sweat general sweats all this can be part we have voice changes or hoarseness there's presence of anorexia there could be edema and we're looking at uh, extremities that is either the limbs the upper and the lower limbs this presence of joint pains this fatigue that we sometimes also call it malaise and we can have state of weight loss now these are constitutional they are not directly happening on the chest but they are indicating a state of respiratory illness so you'll find let's say in pneumonia the patient can give us symptoms of the coughing the hemoptysis the patient will give us the complaints of dyspnea's but in addition to the to the cardinal symptoms the patient can have any of this on the list they could come also with edema they could come with hoarse voices they could be fatigue and weight loss all this can be additional to the primary or the cardinal symptoms that could happen on the chest and that was it for our today's class if you are new kindly remember to subscribe keep commenting and give us highlights of things or topics that we wish us to discuss more on and of course don't forget to share with your networks classmates students if you're a lecturer on this platform and remember to like our videos also thank you very much and see you in our next lessons bye bye